Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. I'd like to thank Stephen and Bertie for inviting me along with Don to give our testimonies here tonight. It's a great honour and a privilege, and may all thanks and go to the, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So, my name is Matt, Matthew Bloomer, and I'm not long 40 years old, and I am from Portadown and grew up in a housing estate called Kilikamean. And I didn't have the privilege of coming from a Christian home because I've grew to learn that it is a privilege to come for, from a Christian home. Um, often Christians go off into the world, but they always have that ground to come back again. Um, but I had a, a happy childhood. My parents done their best that they could for us. And I was the youngest of six children. And we had a good times in their bar, just like anybody else. So the teenage, teenage years came along and I jumped into the world with both feet and around my late teens you know, started drinking and going into the world and smoking and drugs and partying and all the rest of it and coming home with black eyes and not coming home and, and often brought home by the police for a common occurrence in my house. And, I put my poor parents through the mill now, and it wasn't until I had my children many years later that I, I realised the, the torment that I caused them. So at 18 years old, and everyone's relief, I went to join the army. And um, normally your parents are a bit worried when you go out the door to join the army, but I think my were just glad to see the back of me and were probably worried that I wouldn't stick a train on and be back home again causing, causing havoc. But the army was a good move for me at that time of my life and the discipline was well needed. So there was plenty of drinking and fighting in the army and I met new people and seen a bit of the world. So I enjoyed it. So to cut a long story short, after about eight and a half years, I had enough, and I came back from the army in 2008. And um, I took a job in construction, and more or less read, led to the role that I'm in now. And it was a good, it was a good experience. And I've always been, like, I always was a, a kind of a weekend warrior type of drinker, and enjoyed going to bars and all the rest of it and smoking. And hangovers, I suffered from them, but they were just a necess necessary evil, as I, I seen them. And the negativity it was generated was just on a, a you know a burden that you had to bear. So I'm going going from the last seven years to now. Um, I've got married, and I've been blessed with two children, and I've started my own business. So God has been good to me. And until recently, I didn't even really realize that there was a God, so to speak. My beliefs have always been a mixture between evolution to an experiment by aliens to Big Bang theories, you know. I was bamboozled by design, brainwashed by Hollywood and TV and movies and television programming. And I'd always seen religion as a, a sort of a, a form of control and look at all the, the hassle that it causes, especially in this country. And the third of the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's not somebody I always figured that I needed in my life. And I just looked at the Bible as a collection of stories um, written a long time ago. I knew a couple of Christian guys that um, were wild men in the younger days when sort of turned their lives around, but any time I seen them, they would seem happy enough. And um, I always thought oh, I've had to give up drinking and going to bars and all the rest of it and any other bad habits I might have had. And I just thought it was a kind of a mundane or boring existence. But little did I know, you give up nothing and, and there's the world again. So I'm going to jump forward till March 2020 of last year. And um, pandemic hysteria was in full swing. You know, we were bombarded daily with television, media, news channels of Chinese people dropping in the streets and Chinese people getting welded into their apartments. And I was worried, you know, along with everybody else, you're worried about your elderly parents and 
vulnerable people that you know. So I listened to a show called London Rail at around this time, and the guy had, a, he had an interesting backstory that the, the host had, and he had always interested in people on from yogis to Buddhist monks to entrepreneurs, and I was looking for something, and you know, I enjoyed it, and, it, and I didn't know what I was looking for, to be honest, but he had, he had a well-known conspiracy theorist on, March 2020 last year, and this guy, I was, I'd always had him pegged as a bit of a, bit of a nutter, and I was going to actually change, you know, turn it off, but I listened to it anyway, and he said that the whole pandemic, hysteria wasn't going to stop, it was only going to intensify, masks would never leave, and the lockdowns would continue, and the whole the whole plan was to get the medication into everybody and and bring in a lot of other things like world and world governments and like China and whatever, but I didn't take any notice out of it at the time and just got on with my life. And um if I jump forward to um Christmas last last December and um I could see a lot of what this guy was saying starting to unfold and, and happen. And any time you brought it up in conversation to people, then you know it's you were called a conspiracy theorist, and it had split the population and arguments and families and everything that was going on. And, and I remember I was in on a video a, a group a group call one night and. I was going through some of, some of these worries to some people, and I was told it was full, full of it more or less. And once the old people were sorted out, and the vulnerable, then things would be back to normal. And if you take a look at where we are now, a year later, so I felt like the, the only sane person in a madhouse, to be honest. And I'll read out a quote here from a monk that lived in 300 A.D. Um, he was called Anthony, St. Anthony the Great. And he, he said, A time is coming when my men will go mad, and when they see someone who is not mad, they will attack him, saying, You are not mad like us. And we're going, it feels to me like we're headed there, to be honest. And you, you ever walk into a shop, you know, and you're not wearing a regalia, you, you, know, you know what I mean? So along with my fears, my, my alcohol intake, started increasing and I heard this was quite a, quite common that people who stopped drinking had started drinking again and the fear was just everywhere and my weekend drinking had probably turned into Thursdays and Sundays and Mondays and and um, the negativity generated from being hungover and I tried to quit many times, but it just it just didn't happen. I always get a little voice in my head that would have, you know, you've been off it for a few weeks and you got the weekend and it would have, oh, sure, why would you not? You know, sure, it's the weekend. And then um, the cycle would have continued then. And um, the, gen the, the cycle continued in the negativity and you, you'd be a lot of, beating yourself up and why can't you just quit drinking and and all the rest of it. So I was listening to another show called The Sheep Farm, which was a couple of guys from Yorkshire. And they had a, a psychologist on called Jerry Marzinski. And this guy, Jerry Marzinski, dealt with schizophrenics. And um, he was trained just to throw medication into them. And he'd been dealing with them for 35 odd years. And um, he came to realize that he started doing the unthinkable and speaking to these patients. And he came to realize that it was actual negative entity that was into them. It wasn't all in their heads. It was in, like a, a separate evil spirit, if you will. And I really, I didn't even know you had a spirit. That's the way my thoughts were back in back at that time period. And. He said that most of these here patients, over 80% of them, were ex-crystal meth addicts, which is a drug that's prevalent in America. And um, 
wants these pe people to take it. It breaks their body down, but it also breaks their spirit down. And these, these entities can get into them. Um, and the entities, the, the evil spirits, were always trying to cause as much turmoil and torment to their patients as possible. But he, he started treating them with reading scripture to them. And um, a particular verse that he said was Psalm 23. It was effective. The, the patients described it like grabbing worms and throwing them onto a frying pan. And they got some relief from it. So I got up and I went upstairs and my wife Santi gave us a Bible when we got married. And I opened the Bible and, and read Psalm 23 out loud. And the hairs in the back of my neck still on the end. And every goose pimples in my body. And I felt like it was, it was the power of the Word of God come over me or else it was something that was hanging about me. You know, New Year's, New Year's days were numbered. But um, I realized that this book wasn't just a collection of stories. It was, par it was a powerful book. And... Um, the next thing that really happened was I knew I started working with a, um, a man. Not only was he a great engineer and a great mentor, but I knew that he was a Christian. And I started, he always dropped little nuggets of the gospel in over the years I've known him. But it would always fell on deaf ears. But now I started asking him questions. Um, what was this saved, this saved, this term getting saved? What was it all about? And um, he described to me it was, I'm sure it's been used in many sermons throughout the years, it was the equivalent of the Titanic singing and everybody's in the water and they're all in the abyss and there's a lifeboat going around and a hand being extended and pulling people in out of the abyss. And that hand was the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, he described to me the process of getting saved was very personal. You know, it was between you and the Lord. Whereas I always had from the program, and again, you know, an idea of songs and getting dunked in water and all the rest of it. But he said no, it was the, when our Lord was crucified that temple was ripped in two and a, you know we could all go to him so it wasn't long after this that I, st I could have started feeling like I was getting drawn to the Lord and it was one night it was the weekend it was a June of this year and I took a few to drink one night and and I was struggling I was under immense pressure and, and I was in despair, to be honest. To be honest, and you know, my guy Jerry Marzinski actually mentioned in his interview that hard alcohol isn't called spirits for no reason. You know, if you open these gateways, these things can 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 influence you and you know get in get into you in, in in some respects. So I was I was at wit's end corner, and I was I was distraught, and I. I went into my garage and I got on my knees and I cried out for, for the Lord. I cried out for him to save me. And the, the only thing I can describe it as is I was in complete turmoil and it was just like getting hit, clicking your fingers and I was in complete peace and serenity is the only way to describe it. Like, so calm that you could have put the very demons of hell in front of me. And it wouldn't have phased me. And the next day I got up and um, I was different. I felt different and I knew something supernatural had happened to me the night before in that garage. And I, I felt blessed. And as, as, as the days and weeks went on, I got a peace and a joy in my heart and no worries about the future or you know, none of the fear propaganda really was was working on me the way it was. And I knew it was saved then. And the day before Father's Day this year, I got a new father in heaven. And my children got a greatly improved earthly father. 
Um, they will have the privilege of growing up with the Lord in their lives. And the next, the next weeks and months, along with fear and the, the want to drink and smoke and all the rest of it, and they just left. They just left me, and it's hard to describe, but I just didn't need them anymore. Like, the drink did make a, a brief appearance, but it lost its joy, and I lost my joy the next day after. You know, the Holy Spirit was doing its work on me. And it's the trade I was no long, longer willing to make. You know, I, I was a, a new creature in Christ, as Apostle Paul says. And to be honest, the last six months of my life have been my happiest. Um, even with all this here going on. But, um, all I'd done was follow the divine design. You know, I came to the Lord of my own free will and asked him to save me. And then heavenly angels help you and the hellish birds are kept at bay. So anybody that's not saved, I would I would just uh, advise you to you know, take the hand that's being extended to you from the lifeboat and climb under it out of the abyss. And Claim the victory in Jesus. Amen. Thank you.